Hello, everyone. Uh, so it is Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday in this long, dark Sunday of the soul. Um, and what to say, really? Just uh, kind of a nice day outside, not going anywhere. So I thought I might do a little bit of uh, drawing today. Now, um, if you watched my my video from yesterday, you'll see that I was uh, inking a, a page that I'd already penciled to give you a chance to see a little bit of my process. And today I'm going to do something different. As you can see, I've got this ridiculous list here. Dan McDraw. My name's actually Dan McDade. I don't know if you know that. but So I changed this bit in a sort of bit of dry humour, a bit of wordplay to draw. And what I did on Twitter was I asked people for suggestions for characters to draw. And... Uh, I wasn't let down. I got a lot of very interesting ones here. Um, a couple of curios, like Brute Nelson. Brute Nelson is, as far as I can tell, the first person that the Joker ever kills, sort of way back in 1939, 1940. Sky Knight, he's my own character. That was suggested by Colin Bell. Jonah Hex, you probably know. He had a film a few years ago that no one watched. Um, he's a kind of, I suppose, a sort of disfigured cowboy bounty hunter type. Iron Fist has his own TV show, not very good, but a great character. Uh, Thunderstrike, a kind of lame 90s spin-off from the character Thor, who has a bit of a cult following, and included in that cult is me. I think he's absolutely brilliant. He's got a great hammer, which I'm probably not going to draw today, and a cool ponytail, and a sweet jacket, and a lot of 90s attitude, or if you prefer, raditude. Banana Man, sort of British stalwart comedy character, kind of a riff on Batman and, and Superman. He had his own TV show back in the 1980s, voiced by the goodies. As Bats, a portmanteau word that means um, Batman, back in the 90s, um, he, he had his back broken. And during that period, he was replaced by a character called Azrael. It became Batman, so as Bats for short. Nemesis the Warlock, a character created by Pat Mills and Kevin O'Neill for 2000 AD, who I don't really know that well, but has an incredibly cool look. Um, I'm going to try not to swear as much as possible. Like I nearly said the F word there, just really for emphasis. Um, I'm going to try not to. Uh, Deb has asked me not to, because she might want to show these videos to her kids, which I think is, frankly, irresponsible, but... There you go. The Mekon, stalwart enemy, or erstwhile enemy. Don't really know what either of those words mean. I don't know what erstwhile means. Stalwart, I get. Enemy of Dan Dare. Got a great big head and kind of interesting eyes. Kind, I suspect, a little bit of a racial caricature, if I'm honest, from the sort of 1950s. Medusa, that was um, Deborah's quite highbrow idea. Now I was like, did you mean Medusa from Fantastic Four? She's like, yeah, maybe, but also from... Antiquity. So I might draw that. Uh, Martial Law, another great character created by um, Pat Mills and Kevin O'Neill. Another great look, but probably needs a bit of research, that one, because I remember his, his look is quite... There's a lot going on. He's got quite a complicated badge, got a complicated mask. I'm just doing... Probably going to just do headshots for all of these. I'm not going to let do four figures. And, of course, Death's Head, who I might have talked about on here before, but a character created by Simon Furman and Jeff Senior. I think Jeff Senior... Might have been Brian Hitch, but I reckon. But Jeff Senior definitely drew his first strip in Transformers UK back in, I suppose, nineteen eighty seven. I guess um, I feel a bit stuck in nineteen eighty seven at the moment. This does. This all does remind me of the the long Sundays you used to get when you were a kid, when nothing was open, and there was that feeling of dread of what tomorrow would bring. Uh, back in the eighties, it was what tomorrow would bring on a Sunday would be Monday. You'd have to go to school. And now the dread is uh, just more bad news. Anyway, never mind that. So anyway, that's the list. I just have to sort of pick who I'm going to draw today and kind of go with it. I suspect I'm probably going to go with either Jonah, Hex, or Death's Head. Because they're probably the most fun to draw. And my plan, such as it is, is to fill this piece of... I don't know how well you can make this out, probably not that well. This piece of A3... Um, it's actually cartridge paper, fairly heavy cartridge paper with all of these sketches, and then at the end, 
I might sort of auction it off for charity, I don't know, something like that. Um, yeah, I apologise for the wobbling of the um, the camera. Uh, it sort of can't be helped, really, but um, try and bear with me. I'll steady it. Every, every time I notice it wobbling too sort of um, overtly, I'll, I'll reach out and I'll stop it. And that's it. So I think I'm going to draw, I think I'm going to draw Jonah Hex. Let's give that a go. If it doesn't work out, I'll stop. I'll probably start crying. You'll, you'll hit, see me, hear me crying on stream. Um, but hopefully it won't come to that. So, um, as I said yesterday, I will probably talk through some of it. I might forget because what happens is that when you're drawing, a different part of your brain gets engaged. Um, and you see it's sort of happening already. Uh, and then <laughs> it makes it harder to concentrate on two things at the same time. It sort of uses different parts of your brain. I think I might have drawn his hat wrong pretty much right out of the gate, but I'm going to I'm going to widen that brim out as well. I suspect that tie is also wrong. I really should have done a bit of research. He's sort of got more of a clean cut, already got more of a kind of a clean cut sort of um, uh, Robert Mitchum look to him now. Never mind, I'll, I'll rough him up a bit. So there you go, we're going to put a bit of uh, kind of a western type mullet there. I think he's got more of a, just a sort of plain circular brim. There's something a bit more menacing about a circular brim. It's not altogether certain if it's a, is that a good guy or a bad guy? And I think this top, this top bit might be a bit more of a plain circle as well. So, Let's go with that. It's, I want to say a confederate hat. I don't really know American culture well enough to be able to say that for certain. But anyway, I'm sure someone will put me right in the comments. Or put me wrong with fake news, I don't know. That phrase, that phrase fake news, is not quite as funny as it used to be. Anyway. Do a little bit of background stuff there. Now, I'm trying to remember how this goes. He's got a real kind of gnarly look there. I seem to remember the sort of tendrils of flesh hanging down through which you can see his teeth. What a great design this is, wow. Really one of those unforgettable looking characters. I think his nose is basically normal. actually don't know who who created this character so again feel free to let me know and he said downstairs yeah you know what I'm gonna call the comments downstairs feel free to let me know downstairs let's do a bit of cloud type stuff here in the background as well All right, doesn't it? Yeah. How are you doing today? How are you all doing out there? Hope you're in. But also, you know, getting your walk, your government mandated walk. If you've got a dog, I hope you're walking your dog. You know, I don't know. I'm mad. I 
I feel like Jonah should have a look of a walking scarecrow. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Right, I think that's it for the pencils. And I'm going to ink, hopefully not ruin it too much. As with yesterday, I'm using a combination of the uh, Faber-Castell, really nice Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen S, which is short for super fine. Now, I've got to be honest, I don't actually find this tip all that, in quotes, super fine. Um, but it is quite a good tip, and the more you use it, what's quite nice is that the end gets somewhat beveled, so you can get a little bit of um, a little bit of subtlety to the line, a little bit of variation in the line. Not much, but just enough to kind of keep it interesting. So, I have a feeling because this guy is so kind of like gnarly looking, I'm going to be end up doing and doing most of it with a nice big fat um, brush pen. This is a move I learned from, I picked up magpie style from um, Mobius on in a YouTube video. And the move that I'm talking about is that the upper surfaces of something, i.e. that surface that is closer to the light, draw the thin line. And that, those, I mean, I don't always stick with this. It is to some extent uh, instinctive, but by and large is what I do. And those surfaces that are further away from the light, i.e underneath, more in shadow, all those were the heavier lines. So I remember seeing, if you, if you, after you've watched this video, go somewhere else on, go, go onto YouTube, do a search for Mobius inking, that should be one of the first things that comes up. You see he uses a really nice dip pen to do the top of the brim and the top of the hat, and then goes in with a brush afterwards, and immediately you get this real lovely sense of um, weight and mass and dimensionality and all that. I don't know if dimensionality is a word, but all that good stuff. Sorry about the wobble. I don't think Jonah Hex would ever wear a tie, a necktie, that was this. Fancy pants. I don't think that's his style. But it's the tie, the kind of tie I wanted to draw. So, so you see here I'm doing the top of the lapels, because it's closer to the right. Like I say, I don't do this all the time. I don't, it's not a rule exactly. But it is quite a nice way to create a sense of uh, mass. Okay, I think I've gone about as far as I can with a fine liner, with the super fine. So I'm going to go in now with the... Now... Okay. Slightly messed that up, but it's all right. Yep, that's good. It's 
gone very quiet. How does he live with this ridiculous bloody scar on his face? It's, it doesn't make any sense. But it's comics. So, what can you do? So I immediately went and drew the fun bit there. And you shouldn't really do that. Well, you know, I used to think that. And then I saw some Jack Kirby pencils. And for years I'd gone, I had had this misapprehension that he was basically just like a drawing machine. And he would stop, start at the top left corner and then keep drawing duh, 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 until he reached the bottom right. And I thought, wow, that's the way to be. If I could be like that, that's amazing. And then I saw this page of his pencils and he had done basically what, what I do and what I suspect every artist does. And he had drawn all the fun stuff first. He had drawn the thing. He had drawn the human torch and he kind of left the buildings and gone, I'll go back to them when I'm in more of a building mood. So I don't know what to make of that. Whatever works would be my... Um, I think that works. Yeah, that's coming on. Now, slight risk, should I draw the shadow of his hat here? And I'm going with yes. And I think that's all right. I think it's all right. I probably should have should just have done it on the one side. It looked good on the one side, but. Not so hot on both, but never mind, never mind. Might beef up some of these lines a little bit. go to town with this nastiness over here. What a great character. What a fun character to draw. I'm going to do a bit of research and Find out who created this character. And put it in the description below.
off inking those clouds for as long as I can because clouds are boring. Yeah, looking pretty nice. See what's happened here is that the brush has flattened out from doing all that inking. So I'm going to have to, yeah, it's ready. You then do another little bit of inking and it springs back to a point. And then you're ready to go again. That's about as thin a point as I can get. I don't know how easily you can see that, how well you can see that rather. Add a bit of pencil marks, a bit of pencil shading, shall I say? Yeah, maybe let's give that a shot. I think that's that. Bye for now.